Lesson 7-6. We are talking about... Oh, let's go. <laughs> okay, we are talking about Lesson 7-6, Natural Logarithms. We have spent all chapter talking about logarithms, so L-O-G logarithms, that um, are either the common log or, you know, other miscellaneous base. What is the typical base for a common log? 10, right? If there's no base written, it's base 10. But now we're going to move into talking about natural logs, okay? Just like common logs, base 10, you have a button on your calculator. Natural logs, you have a button on your calculator. On my calculator, it's the LN button that is directly below my LOG button, okay? But we have an LN button that will help us when we need to. Natural logs are just like a regular log, except they're base E. And I know we talked about base E, I don't know, maybe back in lesson 7-2 or so, because I remember we talked about how to do E on the calculator. But um, that's really the main difference. We talk about E, do you remember E is, it's called the natural number. It's a lot like pi in that, what do you guys know about pi? You tell me 3.14, right? But you also know... It keeps on going forever, right? Well, E is the same thing. And then it's irrational. It keeps on going forever. E, I think of as 2.718. But, again, it doesn't just stop there. So, um, as it says, I think I mentioned everything here. We've worked with common logs a lot so far this year. Natural logarithm. It could be written as y equals log base E of x. But I don't think you'll ever see that because log base E is better written as natural log of X. So Y equals ln of X. E, again, is the natural number, that 2.718, and it's irrational just like pi. As we go through this lesson, you'll notice we're doing a lot of similar things we've already done. A lot of stuff we're done refer back to when we did them with logs. It's just now doing them with natural logs. So... I'm not doing a whole lot new with you today, really. For instance, in example one, what is each expression written as a single natural log? We did this back in lesson 7 4, if you happen to recall. Why are there two different logs? The only, I mean, they're all the same. In that, other than natural log is just the way with base e, because e is the nat known as the natural number. Why do they call them different things? Or not? I don't have an answer for that. I really, I, you know, it just has to do with that base e makes it a special case, but I don't have a reason for why they separated it out. So, sorry, not answering the question very well, but okay. So, back in seven four. We had four properties that allowed us to take something like this and write it as a single log. No? Okay, so back there we had power property, product property, quotient property, and identity property. Okay, so now... I heard talk of there's division, and when there's division, you rewrite it as, or, I said that backwards, didn't I? There's actually subtraction. When we see subtraction, we're going to rewrite it with division. But before we do that, deal with the two. How do we deal with getting that two out of there? Okay, we're going to move it up to the power. So when I rewrite this, this is going to be the natural log of 15 squared minus the natural log of 75. Okay, two logs being subtracted can be rewritten as one log where the insides are divided. So natural log of 15 squared divided by 75. 
What kind of math can you do here? Okay, 15 squared is? So now I have natural log of 225 over 75. Two twenty five divided by seventy five is three. So natural log of three. Anything else I can do? Okay. You could, if you needed to, find the natural log of three in your calculator and give me a decimal answer. However, what are the directions ask? What is this expression written as a single natural log? So what did I just do? It's a single natural log. So we are actually done here. If it asks me for a decimal answer, then yes, we could take it and put it, put it into our calculator. Does that seem familiar with what you've done before? It should. What a remember what doing this in like we just didn't use the I and U to LOGs. No, just like last week. Oh, yeah. I used it in like other classes. No. <laughs> no, this is your. Alpha 2 should be your first introduction to logs. I don't think you've seen I it before. No, I So. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think you see it. So. Okay. B. Let's try it. Natural log of 7 plus 2 natural log of 5. Okay. Same thing as last time. We're going to start by moving the 2 into the power. Remember, you can't use product or quotient. You have to move the numbers out front. So now I have natural log of 7 plus natural log of 5 squared. What's the product property said? Two logs are being added. You can rewrite them as one log where the insides are multiplied. So it's natural log of 7 times 5 squared. And what does your math tell you? 25 times 7, so 175. And again, we've written as one single log. Can't really go any farther, so we'll stop there. Coming back to us now. Okay, C. Three natural log of X minus two natural log of X. Yes, it has X, but the steps are still the same. Start with the power property. So 3 natural log of x becomes natural log of x cubed minus natural log of x to the second. Two logs being subtracted can be rewritten as one log where the insides are Divided, so I have natural log of x cubed divided by x squared. Yeah. Remember, you can go one more step. x cubed divided by x squared, the base is the same. When you're dividing, you subtract exponents. So then it becomes x to the first. So natural log of x. <coughs> I disagree. Three natural log of x plus two natural log of y plus natural log of five. Oh, just kidding. Okay. Power property on the first two. Move the three to the x. The two to the y. So natural log of x cubed. Natural log of y squared plus natural log of just the plain old 5. You said natural log, and I keep putting NL. No, why isn't 
I know we get mad. We should be in L. What's next? Um, okay, so then. You can't combine like terms, so. What? But it's uh, <laughs> a third. Oh, you can multiply the property. insides. Okay. Power property says if you have logs being added, we write it as one log where the insides are multiplied. So this is the natural log of. Okay, natural log of x to the third times y squared times 5. Um, I just wrote it in that order it was given. Could I make it a little neater? Yeah, if you put the 5 in front of the x and the y, it's a little bit neater. So I could write it as the natural log of 5x cubed y squared. Oh. Not the 5 out front of the whole log, just in the front of the inside of the log there. <laughs> Anything else? No. No. If we put it in as ln x cubed, would like the before you can divide the front one, do you still count? I would. <coughs> I have no idea on that Excel. Okay. That's my answer on that one. Okay, one more in this section. E. Two natural log of three plus natural log of eight. Okay, power property. The two becomes the power on three. Okay, so natural log of three squared plus natural log of eight. Two logs being added can be rewritten as one log where the insides are multiplied. So in this particular example, I end up with natural log of 3 squared times 8. Nine times 8, or natural log of 72. No, just We're going to get through a whole other row. Oh, this one's solving the equation. Okay, so what we just did, we used the properties from Lesson 7-4. And we used skills we used in Lesson 7-4. Now, we're solving equations. We talked about solving equations in Lesson 7-5. Um, we solved log equations. We solved exponent equations. We're going to start here with solving log equations. On the back side, we'll talk about exponent equations. Right now... We have to decide how we solve something like natural log of x minus 3 squared equals 4. Oh, See, I knew it was going to come in oh. somewhere. Exactly. You were just a little too early with it earlier. Okay. Okay. When you have, and this is, if you look back, this is what we did at the end of lesson 7-5. Like the last four examples I did were like this, except they were log base. 10. So what base is this? E. So if you need that little visual, this is base E. So the phrase left, right, middle. So how does left, right, middle work here? Okay, so left to the right, so e to the fourth equals the middle of x minus 3 squared. solving for here? <coughs> what? X. Okay. E. Okay, so and it's a valid question because I, I often run into confusion here. Okay, X and E, they both look like variables. E is not a variable. E is a number. So we know E is 2.718. We're not solving for E. 
We want to know what x is. So the question becomes, how do I work to get x by itself? Okay, so options include we could foil x minus 3 squared out, set equals 0. Then we've got that e to the fourth, makes it a little ugly. I like the other idea better of if this is x minus 3 squared, how do you get that squared to move? Square root. So, okay, yep, she stole my next line. If you square root the right, Square root the left. I'm going to flip my sides as I go here. What is the square root of x minus 3 squared? X minus 3. Square the square root, or square root the square, x minus 3. What is the square root of e to the fourth? Right. Remember when you're taking a square root, you're dividing by that index of 2, so it becomes e to the second. Hold that thought. Okay. What do we have to do in an equation setting when we square root both sides? Plus or minus. Remember, when you square, take a square root in an equation setting, you have to do a plus or minus. So now I have x minus 3 equals plus or minus e squared. Now, how do I solve for x? Now I will take the thought of if it's x minus 3 plus add 3. So now, 3's cancel. You can write this in a couple different ways. You could write plus or minus e squared plus 3. I personally prefer to write 3 plus or minus e squared. But if you'd rather write plus or minus e squared plus 3, that works as well. So if this were like e plus e squared, like lift this e? No. Like this That's, I believe that e is energy, isn't it? Okay. Now, if your direction said to give an exact answer or leave an answer in terms of E, we could stop here. But it says round to the nearest thousand. So this is where I strongly encourage you to practice your calculator to make sure we all know how to use our calculators. Now, okay, that's how do we do a plus 3 plus or minus E squared? You'll have to do 3 plus E squared. And then you'll have to do 3 minus e squared. Practice your calculator. If your calculator is similar to mine, the good news, I can enter it all at once. I can just do 3 plus e to the second. Okay, my e is my second of my ln function. I can do 3 plus e squared and just hit equals. If your calculator is a little more difficult, you might need to define e squared first, hit equals, and then add 3. Nearest thousandth is tenths, hundredths, thousandths, three decimal places. So 10.389. Zero is the next place. It tells the 9 to stay. Repeat the process. 3 minus e to the second. <laughs> that was going to give me a wrong answer, huh? Negative 4.39. Negative 4.39. And the zero tells the nine to stay. Okay. 
Any other thoughts on this problem? Ashley? Do we need to check for extraneous solutions? Well, I see a negative. Negatives and logs don't go together, so we have to consider the situation C. Okay, and I'm going to do kind of a generic plug in. Okay, well, if I plug in negative 4 something, negative 4 something minus 3 something is still a negative, right? Negative 7 something. But then it says squared. That squared is on this x minus 3. If I do negative 7 something and I square it, I'm now going to have positive 49 or so. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Because of that squared, it is okay that I have a negative. Because any x value I put in here is going to automatically become positive. Okay. Now, depending on you, how you plug it into your calculator, if you try and check that way, I've had people getting domain errors. I just try and think logically through it. Negative there, yes, but it's going to square, and that will take care of the issue. So in this particular case, they do actually both work. Feel free. Did everyone get their calculator to cooperate? Yes. Because that is half the battle here. Okay. B. Natural log of 3x plus 5 squared equals 4. Okay, so we're going to start with the uh, left, right, middle. Okay. Um, Knowing that this is base E. E. Okay, left, right, middle says what? It's going to be E to the fourth equals 3x plus 5 squared. Okay, are we okay with left, right, middle there? E to the fourth equals 3x plus 5 squared. Okay, how do I solve for that x? If I square root the right, square root the left. What is the square root of 3 plus, 3x plus 5 squared? 3x plus 5. I was coughing. What is the square root of e to the 4th? Okay. We well, take a square root, divide by 2, so e squared. When you square root in an equation setting? Plus or minus. So 3x plus 5 equals plus or minus e squared? Yes. How do I solve for x? Subtract. Okay. If it's 3x plus 5, I'm going to subtract 5. 3x equals? Okay. Negative 5 plus or minus e squared. I like to put my negative, my number out there in front of the plus or minus. If it's 3 times x, divide by 3. So what I know about x right now is it's going to be negative 5 plus or minus e squared divided by 3. And again, I strongly encourage you to practice the calculator. If you want to do this all at once in your calculator, your calculator is similar to my type. You need parentheses around that numerator. Okay, so you need parentheses around that numerator and then do the divide by 3. Honestly, my suggestion is to just do the numerator negative 5 plus e squared hit equals and then divide by 3. I just care that you have a way that you can remember and you understand. So if I say negative 5 plus e to the second, right there. That's my numerator. Now I'm going to divide by 3, and that is my first answer. Does your answer match my answer? Yes. Three decimal places? 0 0.796. 3 tells the 6 to stay. Repeat the process. 
negative 5 minus e squared. And then divide by 3. Negative 4 point. It's 1, 2, 9, but the 6 tells the 9 to go up to a 30, 10, however you want to say it. I might have entered it in wrong, but. You okay. entered it in wrong then. I probably did. <laughs> I'll try it again. Try it again is my thought. And then the e is squared, so e is squared. Okay. Negative 4 squared. Negative 4 squared. Does this negative answer work? Yes. Yes. Same thing as last time. I can do 3 times negative 4, get a negative, add 5. I'm still going to have a negative number, but I'm going to square it before I take the natural log. So it's okay in this situation. Yours doesn't want parentheses and I'm not. Uh, Yours doesn't? That's what. I wouldn't think that would mess it up, but yeah, it must have when some. I, when I took them away, I got the, the, those two answers. But when I had them, it said error. That's weird. Um. <laughs> okay. Have you guys started C? I I'm know well now. That I will. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> Oh, wait, it's different. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not. Really do we, we did these back in the last lesson. Yep. Are you yeah. sure? Come on. I think you're pulling my leg. We did them at the end of the day, end of class Friday, end of lesson 7-5. Oh, that was a Friday. That was a Friday. Can you do it kind of like what's at the top? Oh, oh. I think if I think yes, if I understand what you're asking. Not yet. But it will. Hold off on your E to the second. We have a problem. Okay. We can't use left, right, middle when I have two logs being added there. Okay, product property, if two logs are being added, they can be rewritten as yeah, one that's log. What I, that's what I was trying to get at. That's what I figured once I... I want to start writing yeah, it. After getting one log, you want that one? Uh-huh. Okay. So what is natural log of 2x plus natural log of 3? Uh, 2x times 3, which is 6x. So natural log of 6x equals 2. And now... I'm ready for left, right, and middle. So base E, E to the second, equals 6X. If it's 6 times X, and I'm trying to solve for X, divide by 6. We divide one side by 6, divide the other side by 6. 6 is canceled. X equals E squared divided by 6. Nothing fancy on the calculator this time. You can just do E to the second. As long as I end my parentheses, I can go ahead and do divide by 6. One point two three one five tells the one to make this one point two three two. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's no negatives. We should be okay here with that one point two three two. Okay. Last one in this section. Oh, oh, oh. 
So before we can get too far into this, we can't do what we want to do until this two moves. To move the two, power property. So natural log of 6x plus 1 squared equals 3. Now what? Well, now it looks like the other ones that we did, so left, right, middle. Oh, left, right, middle, yeah. Yep, left, right, middle, where my left is? Third. E. Facey. So, E to the third, third equals 6x plus 1, quantity squared. How do I solve for x? I'm going to not want to go foiling. If I have something squared, let's square root. If we square root one side, square root the other side. What is the square root of 6x plus 1 squared? 6x plus 1. What is the square root of e to the third? Oh, wait, no, you put in a 2 and 1. Okay, that's good. <laughs> you can't have half to the Okay. So, options include, you can leave the square root of e to the third if you want. Okay, cool. However, what did we learn last chapter about fraction exponents? Uh, well, again, if you leave it as square root of e to the third, your calculator will do that. That can work. But if you recall from last chapter, how do we write the square root of e to the third with a fraction exponent? E to the three over two. Yeah. So the other option is you could say e to the three halves. Because we square rooted both sides, don't forget the plus or minus. <laughs> If it's 6x plus 1, subtract 1. So now I have 6x. I'm going to put as negative 1 plus or minus e to the 3 halves. What is another way to express 3 halves if you want something easier for the calculator? 1.5. 1 1.5. You could say e to the 1.5 if that's easier to use the calculator. And all of it's easier than the square root of e to the third. If it's 6 times x, divide by 6. Divide by six. And I have x is negative 1 plus or minus e to the 1.5 all divided by 6. Remember, you want to do a whole bunch on the calculator once, parentheses around the numerator. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do negative 1 plus now. If you didn't go e to the 1.5, realize you could do the square root of e to the third. That's negative 1 plus or minus, or that's plus, square root of e to the third equals, and then divide by 6. There's my first answer. If you used e to the 1.5, that works. 0.580. 2 tells the 0 to stay. Repeat the process. Negative 1 minus e to the 1.5 plus work equals divide by 6. For a few end of the day announcements, any senior who was completing a Tipton Community Foundation Scholarship application or having difficulty submitting the required Recommendations should stop into the guidance office for submission instructions. Also, the New Orleans trip money is due as soon as Hold possible. On and congratulations to the uh, middle school wrestlers who placed second in the Hooter Heartland Conference journey. Thank you. Two answers here. Yes. Okay. I see a negative, so what should I think? Let's check it, right? Now, go back to your original equation. What happens when I put a negative, essentially almost like a negative 1 in here, right? 6 times a negative, it's going to be a 
negative, say around negative 6, plus 1, still a negative, like negative 5, but it's not squared if you look at the original. They don't have it in that form. So because of technicality, you'd be doing the natural log of approximately negative 5-ish or so. So in this particular case, the negative 0.914 does not work. Okay, so just kind of be aware of that. So we will talk about, we will continue with these tomorrow and talk about them tomorrow. Um, so